Hello, this is Steve from Beatles Leatherworks. Today's project is this old leather bag. I mean, it's seen as better days. So we're gonna replace the center gusset here, this whole piece right there, okay? Now this over time has just lost a little bit of color and um, there's not much you can do to bring it back as far as, you know, adding color or conditioning. It's just starting to, it's just trying, starting to fail, unfortunately. It's done. And once we have it apart, we're going to clean this, add a little bit of color we're gonna retain the stickers. We don't wanna remove those. That just gives it a little bit of history. And clean the inside, condition it, add some color, and bring it back. Now, this particular job, um, the gentleman brought in for an estimate. So I told him to leave it. When I get a chance, I'll go over it, take a look at it, see what it needs, and, and you know, we can talk about it. So fast forward about, maybe about a month, month and a half had gone by. And um, we talked again yesterday. Um, we agreed on the price. Price was a little over $800. Mm -hmm. um, and then what needs to be done and how it's gonna be done. And um, and he said, you know, it's my dad's birthday is coming up. Oh, this is his dad's bag, by the way. I guess his dad is, in, is a flight. Some some do with the flight, that's his, that's his life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I said, oh, that's great. That's a great idea. We can, you know, give that to him for his birthday. I said, well, when is his birthday? He goes, well, you're not going to like that. I said, okay. I got a little nervous because I knew it was coming. He's like, it's Saturday. And today is Friday. And this conversation went on yesterday, which was Thursday. It's Friday really early. It's about 4.30 in the morning. And uh, I had planned to come in to do a video today of a, of a Gucci bag. And... Um, Last night, as as I was kind of you know turning in, I said, "Man, maybe maybe it'll be a good idea to to put the Gucci bag aside and see if I can get this bag done." Now I didn't tell him I was going to get it done for tomorrow, which is Saturday, it was Dad's birthday. So I'm going to try my best to see if I can finish it and give him a call tomorrow morning and have him come pick it up, and maybe we can do a you know, like a customer's reaction video also. I think that'd be really cool. So uh, I think um, I think we're gonna do that. I think it'll be really cool to do that. So and it's just, it's just timing is not really good because my schedule's always behind. There's always things that need to be done and, you know, and get out the door. But I'm gonna put some things aside and, um, and see if I can get this done for him and to have a nice uh, birthday present. All right, let's get started. This is an old bag. So basically, we're going to take it apart. Take the frame off first. That's what we're doing now. Leather is just dried out or dry rotted, and not much to bring it back. And there's the frame, and now we get to rip the sides apart and take the center gusses out. 
And I put some guide marks here and there, just so when we get the, ready to reassemble it, we can assemble it back to where it was. I mean, it's pretty evident where, where it would be, but just in case, you never know. All right, well, I'm not gonna bore you to take the stitches apart. Let's continue. And there she goes. Get the one side apart. And check out the inside. Wow, this is kind of neat, right? This whole pouch gets removed. This zips in and zips out, but this zipper has seen his better days. We might have to clean that up a little bit. I doubt that he's going to be able to, or he's using it like, you know, removing it. But we'll clean all this up and, and make it... Uh, wouldn't even unsnap. I'm afraid I might tear something if I unsnap it. <clears throat> this is um, this type of snap is um, is a dot pull is what it's called, right? It's mainly used like for holsters. It's only you can only unsnap it in a certain direction. I don't want to take a chance. I'll I'll have to get into it a little later probably just kind of stuck together it's kind of cool though huh wow all right let's continue Taking it apart is the easy part. It's like demolition, you know? Just putting a little bit of turpentine here to ease the glue that's holding on the edges. It's a nice sturdy case. Now the hard part begins putting it back together. <laughs> Any volunteers? Nobody? Damn. I guess I'm gonna be stuck doing it by myself. Look at me. All right, she is she is a part. This is uh, my concoction, rubbing alcohol and, and water mixed together. So what we're doing here now, we're just going to kind of relax this, these folds on the leather. Because we want, when the briefcase gets done, when the bag gets done, I want that to be kind of almost the shape of a new bag. Put these weights on here for now, just to kind of keep that briefcase leather type. Hmm, 
This is kind of cool. Property of U.S. property. Interesting. I'd like to know what make is this, what make this bag is. Hmm. He's an aviator, obviously. We'll find out more when the sun comes to pick it up. Give a little history about the bag. All right, let's continue. All right. Oh. What is the obsession with you guys in my apron? Here's another apron that I made a long time ago. You guys see it says Beatles on here? You see that? <laughs> uh, the other apron has my phone, my pen holder. It's very convenient, you know? But we're not going to get any customers at this time of the morning, so I figured I'd put this one on. I'm not getting rid of my apron, all right? Hey, man. You make a lot of money, why don't you get a new apron? Better yet, why don't you make a new apron? <laughs> I can. I've done it in the past a bunch of times. I don't want to. I like my apron. Leave my apron alone. <laughs> uh, you guys are crazy. All right. So this is the centerpiece that we're going to replace. It's a big piece. It's a big bag. 50 inches by 10 and a quarter, something like that. The centerpiece is like a stiffener, basically. It gives the bag its shape. It's got six feet on the bottom. Okay. This is the last piece we're going to put in because it's kind of easier to maneuver these side stitches right here. Let me lower this down a little bit. So these stitches are basically, it's easier to stitch this, the center gusset piece, the divider to the gusset without that piece in there. Okay, so we'll put that piece last. That's not a big deal. Now we got to cut a piece of leather. Now I've got some leather, but it doesn't have that, that pattern on there. It's got a nice, um, like almost like a pebble grain crosshatch pattern, which um, I have that type of leather, but it's a, like an, it's like an upholstery leather. It's not, it's not as stiff as it you know it should be i don't think that's gonna i don't think that's gonna work on that on this bag it'll look it'll look very close to what it is but you know what i think structurally let's make it work better than visually will will it'll be okay it just won't be 100 percent matched to the print okay all right let's continue I think this would be good. So maybe it's about a four ounce oil tan leather. I think this would be perfect for that side gusset piece. It's not very clean leather, like for example, you see the marks, branding. But for something like this, I think that'll be fine. Usually we kind of work around that, those little mark areas. But in this particular case, I think it'll be okay. <clears throat> well, we won't use that branded, branded area, but you get the idea. All right, man, I can't wait to finish this. It's going to be real nice. He's going to be shocked when it gets done. Me too. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh-oh. I cut something. <laughs> Look at that. That went right through the safety pin. All right, should we trigger some people by sharpening that real quick? <laughs> Where's my stone? 
I'll be back with my stone. <laughs> okay, trigger alert. Trigger alert. Trigger alert. <laughs> so as you guys saw that, you know, I, I went, you know, I went through almost that, okay? So it kind of messed up the blade. So, you know, I've done this in my videos, right? It just kind of makes the tip a little bit sharper. I normally use this knife here. This is my dad's. This knife is basically used for people, clickers is what it's called, people who cut uppers, okay? And basically you can, this is the, this is all of the blade. If you loosen it here, you can pull this blade in and out. All right, so this I normally sharpen with my file. And then once in a while, you know, with the stone, like that, just get the edge a little sharp. Okay. I mean, there's lots of, I know how to sharpen stone. I know how to sharpen blades. I'm not a, I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to sharpening blades, like some people may be, but it gets the job done. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you guys because I'd get a kick out of the comments. Somebody called me an idiot for, for sharpening the stone or sharpening the disposable blade. It's not really, it's not really, you know, it doesn't need like a straw, you know, in, in a wet stone. It's not necessary with these blades. You just want to get that edge a little bit sharp again, you know, and you can use it for a little while longer. Especially like when I'm, when I'm cutting stitches, you know, just the edge needs to be a little bit sharp so you can kind of, just tip the uh, tip the stitch so it'll break. So I hope I triggered somebody today because that's my duty. I wake up, say, "All right, who am I going to trigger today?" Some people just see my name and oh my god! Oh, some people need to get a life. It's just a disposable blade. That's all it is. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> this is the stiffener that we're going to put for the bottom of the bag. 22.5. This is where mathematics comes in handy because um, there's a lot of measurements you got to take. So kids, for all you watching, stay in school. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm a high school educated. And was never really great in math. I don't even think I took algebra as a course in my high school years. I graduated in 1984. Yep, I'm an 80s kid. 80s, 90s, I guess. Yes, sir. A lot of fun day. Hammer time! Mini hammer time! Not too much, not too much hammering going on today. Unfortunately, I mean, I could just pound on the counter if y'all want. No? All right, I hear you. I hear you. All right. Then we take this. Okay. And bring it here. As you guys can see, I've got the center gusset cut. Everything is marked. The side piece is stitched on. Okay. 
make some room here. And we're just going to kind of put this on here and mark our holes. Center, basically lined up with the leather center. And everything should be lining up just fine. Mark it like that. So punching the holes now, it'll be easier than when it's assembled, you know. I mean, you can still do it, but since it's a flat piece, it's much easier to do it now. I forgot to mention to you guys, my plaque is coming today. Well, it's supposed to anyway. So excited! My hundred, my hundred K plaque. Oh my god! They said it was going to be. It's in. It's in. In the route, and it's coming today. I'm looking. I'm all giddy. Maybe I'll do a little. Which we'll call box opening. All right, let's continue. Just like picking the stitches when we were repairing shoes, this is basically the same concept. If you're going to take something apart that needs to be restitched, you have to remove the old stitches. I mean, you don't have to have to, but that's the right thing to do. This is a piece of foam crepe. Once I pick the stitches, I run this over on top of it like that. I should say, I'm sorry, this is a plantation crepe, not a foam crepe. Sorry, I haven't had breakfast yet. And then this just kind of removes the stitches. But you got to pick them first. Because if you run them on top like that, it's not going to do much. So you got to kind of lift them up a little bit. And then the friction... Take some off. See? Now you learn something today. You see? And you say I never teach you anything? <laughs> Ungrateful. <laughs> Let's continue. A lot of trucks going by today. It's early. Well, not really early. It's 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. I don't know why I find this fascinating too. Cool. Let's continue. I'm gonna show you guys something. Really cool future. Is that cool? Steel. Because I'm bent. That's just there to give it some structural support. Isn't that neat? It's right hidden right in that pattern. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. I'm gonna replace this plastic window.
I'm going to put this lock back on. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. We'll put it on. First, we have to dye the briefcase. All right, it's prepping that surface so the die can so the die can take. I'm gonna use a little bit of acrylic dye. Then we're gonna condition the heck out of it. We're gonna condition the dickens out of it. <laughs> you guys remember that? You don't remember that. Only the diehard Beatles fans remember that. That was from the Bob Ross series. I'm sorry, Rob Boss. Cool. And as you guys can see, we are getting there slowly but surely. All right, let's continue. Coffee time. We have uh, we have my friend Chris this morning. I grew up with Chris ever since what year? Eighties? Seventy nine. Late late seventies. Late seventies. Well, I, w I was here. We moved here to the states in seventy seven. So seventy nine, approximately around that time, I met Chris, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> That's when we had we had more hair and and you know it was no no you know no white. Chris had long hair. I had long hair. <laughs> <laughs> so he's about the only one awake at this hour that comes and visits me. We have coffee, so I appreciate it. It's always good to take a break between jobs it's just to catch up. Sometimes we sit on the porch, but it's a little cold out today, so we decided to do it indoors. Hope y'all having a good day. Enjoy. So I'm using Bic 4 as my conditioner. Uh, let's put this aside real quick. Looky, looky here. Okay. So, got this dyed up. I'm ready to moisturize. I think I'm going to do maybe about three coats, I would say. And then when I get done, and then put another coat on. Now you can use anything you want, like a a cloth or you know like an old t-shirt to apply the conditioner on you can use um, old socks but make sure it's clean stinky 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 this kind of is uh, just kind of moisturize the leather as best as you can can you guys see it it's looking good right Let's continue. This is a triple zero steel wool, and we're making that lock look a little better. A little bit of buffing like that, cleaning it up, goes a long way, you know? Once we put it back against the black background, this is going to pop.
Cool. Making progress one step at a time. Okay, I mean, it's not brand new, but it's much cleaner than what it was. All right, let's continue. piece. Once we glue it in there, we will stitch it. The buzzing is my sewing machine. So, we've got this side stitched on, okay? That's one of the center gussets there. See, there's an X right there, and an X right there. There's two X's right there. And there's two X's right there. This is just basically just when you take things apart, you make sure you mark them so you can put them back to where they belong. It's very easy when you've got, when you've got, you know, a lot of pieces when you're working with a project, you got to mark it. I mean, if you don't mark it, then you're going to be lost. Then you're going to waste your time trying to figure out how things were which is not a very good thing. Okay. All right, let's continue. We got the center gusset stitched. Okay. So now we're going to glue this together first. Then we're going to run the stitch all the way around on both sides. Then we can put the frame on. Frame goes on top. Once the frame gets stitched, I guess we're just going to have to do some touching up here and there and um, adding some more conditioner and we should be done with this project. All right, let's continue. Okay, we are getting there. thing is left is to stitch this on but now the issue is going to be that I think I'm gonna to have to stitch this by hand because this takes a this takes like a cylinder arm machine which my cylinder arm is not going to be able to do this so I'm gonna to have to figure it out maybe stitch it by hand on there Morning, hey good how are you so we'll figure something out okay all right let's continue Thank you. 
came in today. All right, should we do it? Oh my God. What a big deal. Such a big deal, you know? We have a shipping day for tomorrow. Just... I'm videoing. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right, so let me get back to what I was doing. Are right, you guys ready? Oh, there's a little cushion. Wow. Look at this paper. This is heavy paper. This is so cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wow. Oh my goodness. Come on now. Check it out. I hope they spell it right. B E D O. I love their work. Oh, cool. All right, guys, this is all because of you guys. I had nothing to do with it. Very cool, very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Without you guys, I wouldn't have been able to, to do this by myself. All right, and now I gotta figure out where to put it. Where are we gonna hang it? Reza, we're gonna hang it. We'll find some place. Yeah, sure. Some place nice. How about where that clock is? Yeah, right above there. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it again. You guys are the best. Thank you. So now this is the tedious part here. We're just going to have to basically just stitch it all the way around by hand. All right, so welcome back. We are done with another project. It is almost 6 p.m. It was a long day. It was a very long day. And there's a couple of small little details left on it, but I wanted to show you guys basically what it looks like. I still have to stitch these areas right here to the frame. And also on the inside, Put a thin cover on the center piece there just to hide the details of the rivet but overall i think it turned out great so so we contacted the owner well the owner's son he is in he is out of town unfortunately but his dad is his birthday is his father's birthday he's going to come in tomorrow and we're going to record his reaction you guys always ask me about customers reaction well this is going to be i hope i hope it's going to be a good reaction and it is his birthday tomorrow and um he's going to basically tell us about the bag how long he's had it what's the background and so forth all right i think it turned out pretty good i'm happy with it from what it was to what it is it's incredible i think but unfortunately i didn't take any pictures of of before i know I'm, i always forget that geez you know i gotta make it a i gotta make it a rule that put it in front of me on big letter saying take pictures take before pictures all right so thank you for joining me i appreciate that and once again guys this is this is because of all you guys that i have this without you guys this would not be in my hands and i really appreciate it i sincerely want to thank you for you guys watching my videos commenting sharing 
thumbs up, thumbs down. It's okay. We'll take the thumbs down too. As long as they're watching, that's all that matters. Anyway, so um, we got many more projects on the way. So be patient and uh, we'll get to you one at a time. If you guys have any questions, send me an email, betos at yahoo.com. And um, if you have uh, an item to be shipped in, um, when you're on the main page of uh, YouTube, on the right hand side, you'll see a shipping form. Fill that out, send it with your item. I'll keep in touch with you as soon as I receive it. <sighs> it was a long day today. It really was. Not just with this, just overall running the shop with phone calls and, and customers. So I appreciate that. And I'm very blessed that I have the business to keep me busy and uh, to feed my family. All right, we'll see you guys again on the next project. Take care. All right, so welcome back. We have the customer of the bag here. This is Chris. Hi, Chris, how are you? Good. And Good uh, we're gonna basically show him and get a reaction. Okay, all right, let's get the bag. Close your eyes, Chris. Okay. <laughs> All right, open them up. <laughs> it takes me back, so. So tell us about this bag. Uh, how, how old is it, first of all? It's uh, probably 33, 34 years old. Wow. And so uh, I was a navigator, I was also a pilot, and this was uh, a, uh, it's a substantial bag to be able to carry lots of publications. It, it, it is. And, it's a uh, big bag. Oh, yeah. And checklists and all kinds of things. So a navigator back in the day, uh, so this is uh, mid to late 80s, uh, uh, we had to carry all kinds of, every document that we had to have for uh, how we did operating procedures as well as uh, nice. uh, navigation Tools, a lot of things now that, uh, like I said, if I would show you, it right. would be an iPad right. instead of this. And so this, jokingly, is a, I was talking to a friend of mine last night. We call this the Mary Poppins bag because it kind of looked like it's so big, right? Oh yeah, that and the way it opened up, and the you know he was joking. You got to pull a, a umbrella out of there and fly down from the upstairs or whatever. But uh, uh, so anyway, this is my wings as a navigator. That's um, cool. And scratches. Uh, this bag has been. Save the patches for you too. The there bag. you go. So. Uh, so this bag has been a lot of places around the world that most people haven't been. That the patch in the middle there is from uh, the 70th squadron out of the uh, RAF. So yeah. I did an exchange uh, trip, a couple weeks with them that we used to do, and just other uh, uh, awesome. stickers that I used to use on the outside that we carry, and plenty of scuffs and things. Yeah, yeah. But the bottom here, so. Um, there was just no bringing this back. Oh, I no. mean, when, when your son brought it in and I was like, leave it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do, but leave it. I'm sure I could figure something out. And mm -hmm. and I think that it turned out amazingly. I think this will oh, last yeah. for no, many years to come. So it, uh, So anyway, it, uh, I was off at, uh, there you go, uh, at Desert Shield and I got selected to go to pilot training. And so when I came back, uh, from Desert Shield, I was a navigator over there. We were living in the dirt and dust and all the things, tent so cities, cool. all the stuff you see. And so uh, that's a lot of the Cold War days when we had leather, everything. Right. Now it's all switched to different fabrics, right. a lot from being in more austere environments where it dried out. So That's this, where all the patina came from. <laughs> exactly. And so uh, when I came back from that, I, to go off to pilot training, I had to go off to a screening program and then when I came back moved out of my house it was right before I came back just in Christmas of 1990 and then went off right as the war started and right. so in a lot of shuffle going on of household goods that military people are familiar with you, you're trying to live out of right. multiple places and stay keep your life going and all that uh, as a nav I didn't or as becoming a pilot I didn't need my navigator stuff but I wanted it. well I lost track of it oh, and okay. so it ended up uh unbeknownst to me inside a garage at, at my in-laws house in North Carolina oh, and cool. unfortunately my father-in-law uh, passed away this oh, year sorry, as they were, yeah so yeah. it uh, right before COVID and it was a very quick illness with leukemia and all and but uh, in going through a lot of stuff he this kept them yeah okay. and so this was found in the garage it was he used to keep a, a, a Thunderbird that he had in there it was called nice. the bird cage and nice. so in the bird cage this was there for 
30 years. Wow. So from roughly 1990 till uh, earlier this year, and I have, wow. I have lost track. And so That's so cool. It uh, some mice had taken residence oh, in yeah. there and different things you, like that. And you could, so you could you could smell the mustiness. You know the leather that's been oh, sitting yeah. for a long time so and so it had sat in a uh, it was protected from the elements in terms of no rain and that sort of stuff right. but it was not temperature controlled sure. or anything so it was a garage on a on a farm and well, luckily mm -hmm. everything else was in good shape the front back panel the frame interior was not bad just where the heavy traffic basically we call that the bottom and the corners were just kind of worn out so you know replacing that centerpiece as you can see it brought it back well cleaning and dying and you know all together mm -hmm. it'll give it some new life so hopefully it'll last for many years to come now so and so that's uh, awesome. yeah that's uh this is evidence of some of that time but as i said dragging it we in yeah. the military you're familiar with the term of bag drag which is You've got so many personal equipment and chemical warfare stuff. And right, right. You have to have your publications. Then we had other publications that That's were on the cool. aircraft. So it's Everything got great history then. Oh, yeah. It's, as I said, it, this is legitimate wear and tear of many years cool. of, of the bag drag. Well, and, um, thank you for your services. Oh. I appreciate it. And happy birthday. Thank you very much. I'm glad uh, I could uh, make it a little bit more enjoyable for you. And so this, that's uh, I was telling my son, the one thing, uh, so one of the programs I work with today, I'm back with the government okay. uh, as a dot .org, as I say, an old retired guy. And uh, we work with electronic flight bag, as it's now called. Since right. this is an old fashioned flight bag, everything's on iPads and that. And so uh, my son kept some of the publications, the things that were still usable that hadn't been torn up. And I want to take this and I'm a post it in my office to be able to show yeah, where we've cool. come from. So it's a bit of living history. That's awesome. And uh, you That's have made awesome. it uh, back to 100%. Cool. And, uh, Thank you so I, much. I really appreciate your work. I know you put a lot of effort in. in I enjoyed in it. It was, it was good work. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was something so. that it was once a thought gets in my head, the only way to get it rid of it is to finish the job. That's why I want to get it done. Plus, it was your birthday. I figured, you know what? It works out both ways. So. And that's very much appreciated. Good. You're welcome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me again, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next project. Take care.